in this lecture we are going to study bragg's law bragg's law derived condition for constructive interference of x rays which are scattered from parallel atomic planes particularly it it identifies condition for diffraction peak of x rays which are scattered from atomic planes let us consider here set of parallel planes whose miller indices are hkl so particularly we are considering here set of parallel planes whose miller indices are hkl so i am going to draw here diagram for that in this case i am going to show only two dimensional atomic planes here i have shown three atomic planes whose miller indices are hkl i will show the atomic position also these are the atoms so this is a family of planes whose miller indices is hkl this is only one set of the family so just say it is a set of parallel planes whose miller indices are hkl and so its interplanar spacing this is interplanar spacing interplanar spacing is nothing but normal distance between two consecutive parallel planes and this is equals to d sub x hkl that is interplanar spacing then these planes are exposed to x rays here i am going to consider only two x ray beams which are interacting with atoms in the plane so let's say this is ray 1 which interact with this atom and then it is scattered or reflected so this is ray 1 and this is the reflected ray reflected ray 1 so in this case ray 1 let me write that ray 1 this ray 1 is reflected from top atomic plane with glancing angle equals to theta glancing angle theta so this plane makes an glancing angle theta 
So this angle is the glancing angle and that angle is theta. Similarly, this is also glancing angle and that is theta. So that was about the ray 1. Then ray 2, let me show ray 2. Ray 2 is reflected from lower atomic plane. Okay, this is ray 2. This is ray 2. This ray 2 also makes an glancing angle theta with the plane. This is also theta. And this is reflected ray 2. So let's write about ray 2. Ray 2 reflected from lower atomic plane. with the same glancing angle with glancing angle theta then as i said here ray 1 interact with the atom in the first in topmost atomic plane and then it is reflected ray 2 interact with the atoms from the lower plane and then it is reflected this reflected ray 1 and reflected ray 2 interfere and produce the diffraction pattern. Ray 1 and ray 2 interfere and produce X-ray diffraction pattern. So whether they, that depends on when they are constructively interfere. To find how the power difference between them, now this ray 1 and ray 2, they may interfere constructively, they may interfere destructively. Let us find the condition for constructive interference. To find that condition, let me do some modification in this diagram. In this diagram, this is the distance between these two atoms and this distance is equals to D suffix HKL that is interplanar spacing. Then I am going to draw normal on ray 2 from that, this point. From this point, I have drawn normal on ray 2. Also, I am going to draw normal from the same point on the reflected ray 2. So this is a normal on reflected ray 2 drawn from that point. This is the normal. So both are the normals. Let me name some points over here. Let's say this point is A, this point is B and this point is C. So from the figure it is clear that ray 2 travels some extra path compared to ray 1, ray 2 travels some extra path and that extra path traveled by ray 2 is equals to AB plus BC. Let me highlight that. From this point to this point,
from this point to over here and then from this point to over here this is the extra path traveled by ray 2 so let me write that extra path traveled by ray 2 is equals to AB plus BC as shown in the diagram and therefore path difference between ray 1 and ray 2 is equals to AB plus BC because they are waves and this is the part difference AB plus BC part difference between this ray 1 and ray 2. Let's find how much is AB. See the diagram over here. In this diagram, this angle is theta and this angle is also theta because this is the normal if this is the theta over here then this is 90 minus theta if this is 90 minus theta then this angle is equals to theta similarly this angle is also equals to theta then let us take the sine theta sine theta would be a b upon interplanar spacing the sine theta I am considering any one triangle there and in that case sin theta is equals to AB upon interplanar spacing which is D suffix HKL and therefore AB is equals to interplanar spacing into sin theta. So we got the AB. Similarly, BC is also equals to interplanar spacing into sin theta. So BC is also equals to D suffix HKL into sin theta. And so the path difference generally denoted by delta and that is equals to AB plus BC which is equals to 2 interplanar spacing into sin theta. So this is the part difference. What we have to find here is we have to find the condition for constructive interference. And therefore, this 2 d suffix hkl sin theta should be equals to n lambda that is the condi condition for constructive interference and this is nothing but Bragg's law so this is the Bragg's law Bragg's law is nothing but the condition for constructive interference for the scattered x-rays from the set of parallel planes and so we got this Bragg's law so from this equation you know if the lambda is known and if you know the interplanar spacing then we can find theta or if lambda is known and somehow if we can measure this glancing angle theta then we can find the interplanar spacing HKL and once you know the interplanar spacing HK, B suffix HKL then we can find Miller indices for that set of parallel planes. That was about the Bragg's law.